Hello and welcome to another A-Level Economics video with me, Mr. Goff, for MrGoff.com. This video will focus on income and cross elasticities of demand. Income elasticity of demand refers to the degree to which demand changes when income changes. For instance, when my disposable income is better, I stop buying my meat at the supermarket and go to a butcher instead. However, if unexpected bills arise, I would very quickly change back to going to the supermarket once my disposable income was lower. The formula to calculate income elasticity of demand is percentage change in demand over the percentage change in income. If average incomes rise from £50,000 to £55,000, and demand for a product rises from 1,000 units to 1,200 units, then the percentage change in demand is 20%, the percentage change in income is 10, and so the income elasticity of demand for that product is 2. A product with an income elasticity of greater than 1 has income elastic demand. Games for a games console might be income elastic, that is, the more your income, the more games you are likely to demand. A product with an income elasticity of between 0 and 1 has income inelastic demand. Toilet paper is likely to be income inelastic. If you earn more money, there is no benefit to having more toilet paper. For most goods, as income rises, consumers are likely to demand more of that good. These goods are referred to as normal goods and will have a positive income elasticity of demand. Inferior goods buck this trend and have a negative income elasticity. As incomes go up, consumers stop buying inferior products in favour of better alternatives. For example, people might stop buying tinned chopped tomatoes in favour of fresh tomatoes. Inferior goods are bought in high quantities by those on low incomes. Then they are bought less and less as incomes increase, as illustrated in our quantity income graph by the demand curve D1. Normal goods are bought in higher quantities as incomes rise, as shown by the demand curve D2. Some goods are normal at low incomes and inferior at high incomes. Minced beef, for example, may be bought in higher quantities as incomes begin to rise, but as incomes reach a certain point, this product may be swapped out for a higher quality product such as steak. Cross elasticity of demand measures the change in demand for one product as a result of a change in price for a different product. Cross elasticity occurs where a product has substitutes or complements. Substitutes are the next choice of product that a consumer might buy instead of buying the particular product we're talking about. If you think about chocolates, when you go to buy a chocolate bar, there'll be many substitutes that you can choose if you were to change your mind. Complements are products that go along with another product. For instance, PlayStation games are a complementary product to the PlayStation console. Buying one encourages the purchase of another. The formula for cross elasticity of demand is the percentage change in demand for our product divided by the percentage change in the price of the substitute or complementary good. If a shop raises the price of a can of Coke from one pound to one pound 10, and the demand for a can of Pepsi goes from 100 to 120 cans, then the percentage change in demand for Pepsi is 20%, the percentage change in the price of Coke is 10%, so the cross elasticity of demand for Pepsi with respect to the price of Coke is two. For goods with substitutes, as the price of a substitute increases, more people will switch from the substitute to this particular good. As both the change in price and change in demand are positive, substitutes tend to have a positive cross elasticity of demand. 
If we were to look at the price of a substitute decreasing, then people would switch from our good to the substitute good. In this case, the change in price and the change in demand are both negative, and so we would still have a positive cross elasticity of demand. For products with complementary goods, as the price of a complementary good rises, demand will fall. If we think about a games console again, as the average price of console games rises, the demand for the actual console itself will fall. However, if the price of games was to fall, then demand for the console would rise. For complementary goods, price and demand move in opposite directions, so complementary goods have a negative cross elasticity of demand. Some goods are unrelated and so have a cross elasticity of zero. For example, a rise in the price of eggs is unlikely to affect the demand for sports cars. That brings us to the end of this video on income and cross elasticities of demand. Join me again soon when I'll be introducing the concept of supply. Use the resources at mrgoff.com to help you revise economics. And until next time, it's bye for now.